Hi, I'm Russ Qualia. The team at the Qualia Institute for Voice and Aspirations want to put something together for our colleagues around the world that would directly address the importance of voice and aspirations in online learning. We want to put something together that was meaningful, engaging, action-oriented, and relatively quick. Our goal to do this is to be done in less than 30 minutes. You be the judge of that when we're done. A special note, we are purposely not editing what we're doing today. This is gonna be raw, it's the uncut version, which may be profoundly evident about halfway through. Yes, we put a lot of time and planning into this, but we want it to be real and reinforce the fact that it's okay not to be perfect with online learning. While we might have looked a lot better if we'd gone through some slick editing, we thought we should lead by example and give you the real us, flaws and all. Teaching and learning is currently profoundly different for most of us, but that does not mean we lose the very soul, the very soul of who we are in the process. There's endless pieces out there regarding online learning and how best to do it. This concept of online learning isn't new, but for some of us, it really is. Online learning has been around forever. I mean, a really long time, but always online learning was a choice. Right now, online learning is a necessity. We're gonna take a bit of a different cut at online learning today. We're gonna to put the lens of promoting student voice and aspirations. Why is that so important? Because what we know about student voice is that when kids have a voice, they're five times more likely to be engaged in their learning. Five times more likely to be engaged in their learning. Thus, when we think about online learning, we must do everything, everything we can to ensure the voices of students are not lost in the process. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Dr. Lisa Landy, who is the Senior Field Director for the Quality Institute. Thanks, Lisa, for doing this with me today. Of course, looking forward to the conversation with you and with the green light that's blinking on the camera. Um, but like many of you, I have spent the last few weeks uh, stocking up on supplies, supporting my three students in living in my home and transferring their learning to an online platform, um, trying not to lose my mind. <laughs> but we've also had conversations that have been so meaningful around what it really means to be part of a global community. And we've dusted off and played games that we haven't touched in years completed a few puzzles and I have begun to make house decorations out of empty toilet paper rolls as they seem far too valuable to throw away. <laughs> um, on a serious note though, I've also had some incredibly meaningful conversations with my colleagues as we've really begun to dig into what does it mean to honor student voice and aspirations during this time of online learning? How can we really let students know during this time that their voices are valuable and that we want to and are ready to hear them as we continue this learning journey in a new way. We are convinced that student voice is more important than ever. The messages that we send students during this time will tell them a lot about how we value them as individuals and how we value learning in general. Yes, learning time has been lost. Our lessons are not going to be the same. Um, and we have mountains of challenges that we're facing. But we at the Institute, we're choosing to view this time period through the lens of possibility and opportunity, rather than just getting stuck admiring the problems of the current times. We think there's a lot of good that can come from this time, and we're looking forward to learning from students and what they have to say. Thanks, Lisa. In, in light of total transparency, when Lisa started this section, she mentioned that her words, we're really looking forward to this. I can tell you right now, we have both been dreading doing this webinar. Uh, <laughs> Not, not that we don't want to share information with you or that we don't think it's important to share the information we want to share with you, um, but it is intimidating talking to a green light. Um, we've been building up to this for about five days to get the courage to do it online. We finally did it online, and I told you this was going to be uncut and unedited. What I failed to mention to you the first time we did this, the moron himself uh, forgot to record it. Um, so you're getting the second best now because the first session was unbelievably good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're here and we're gonna make the best of it. And like I said, it's gonna be uncut and rough, um, but at least this one's being recorded. We wanna share with you our thinking on how to infuse student voice into online learning. Give students some control during this chaotic and quite frankly, seemingly uncontrollable time and keep them meaningfully engaged through virtual means. So, so let's jump in. Lisa, you want to hit slide number one, which you already did. That's incredibly impressive. Um, one, be creative in the box. Now, 
you've heard always think outside the box. Some of you that have heard me in the past, I always tell you think inside the box. Not that I want to stifle your thinking, but we need to realize that we're in a box, right? Now, I've adjusted my thinking. Um, I actually think now we do need to think outside the box. We need to grab ideas in every which way we can. But the bottom line is we need to be creative in our box. What we really need to do is be creative in the box we're in now. The truth is we're living in a very tight box, a really tight box and seemingly getting smaller by the day. Sure, think outside the box as much as you want, but bring that thinking back into your box and put it into action. Literally make your box interesting. This is something I should not admit, but when I watch the news now, because everyone is being beamed from their homes, I find it more intriguing looking at their backgrounds. I want to see what's in their bookcases. I want to see how much of an egomaniac they may or may not be. I want to see what books they're reading. I just want to see if they're even having an ounce of creativity when they're against a blank wall. So I, I asked my daughter to set up mine. This is why my little box here might look pretty good to some of you. Um, I have all sorts of things up here that she knows are interesting to me. And Oh, and there she is. That is my daughter. And here's what's something interesting that, quite frankly, I just found out right this second. She arranged my, my bookshelf and took her sibling pictures down. So that's not ideal, granted. But the point is, make, make your bookshelf interesting. I promise if I do this again, you'll see my other three children. Um, rather than seeing the box as dreadful and horrible, shine a light of opportunity on learning. All of our suggestions today are about being creative in the box we're in right now. So let's get at some of those suggestions while we're in the box right now. Lisa? All right. Let's just accept that the camera adds 10 pounds and stop worrying about being red carpet ready. Our students have grown up in a world where they see each other's faces constantly through TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever applications they're using, they see their, their faces of their friends all day, every day. And during, especially during this time of uncertainty, they just want to see you, the real you that they recognize from the classroom as a sense of stability and normalcy. So, so don't hide. Um, don't be afraid of the camera, as we are trying not to be today. <laughs> um, but just jump in and be, be real and vulnerable with your students. Also, don't be afraid to throw a personal touch in here and there. Consider recording a message of encouragement for your students and their families. Uh, if you're submitting an assignment online for your students to access, throw in a picture of your lunch or your dog or something funny just so that you can laugh together. Those personal touches will go a long way uh, as we're in this time of, of not seeing each other face to face. It's just important that we let students know that you see them as an individual, even on the other side of the computer screen. And as they see you as the individual, one of our suggestions is the next slide, grow bigger ears. Yep, no, not literally, you don't need to grow bigger ears. But the point of the growing bigger ears is that we need to be way more purposeful about allowing students to regularly give us feedback. It's feedback, feedback, feedback. Not just about what they're learning. Yeah, that, that's important, granted, that, that, that's a given. But we need feedback about regarding the clarity of the lesson. We're offering lessons differently. We need feedback on that. Not at the end of the, of the semester, or the end of the quarter, but the end of every day. Things that they're struggling with, we need feedback. Uh, we need feedback about them offering ideas for trying something new as we all grow as a new community. Now, understand that word, the operative word there is all. We are all growing as a new community of online learners. The reason we grow is because we're, we're listening, we're learning, we're leading. So I'm begging you, ask for more feedback. Feedback shouldn't be an option. It's a required expectation now. We used to think, oh, the greatest teachers, they provide, lot, they provide lots of feedback to our students. Well, you know what? That's not a, just a nice thing to do anymore. It's an absolute required thing to do. It has to be one of our highest expectations. Admits the push to cover mountains of content because with going to be lots of pressure on us to cover mountains of content. Commit to providing ample time for students to share their ideas, to ask some questions, and to offer one another, not just you, but each other feedback as they learn. Feedback can also be fun. Um, play a song at the start of a lesson. Let students rate your musical selection. Ask the class to rate your outfit. 
as long as you can write theirs. Any kind of feedback is a way to connect to your students and to let them know you're learning from them. Take the time for feedback, not because it's something that you should do, it's because it's something right now we have to do. Grow bigger ears. And then take those bigger ears <laughs> into the unknown. Um, embrace the unknown. Um, even in the most well-organized classroom, learning is rarely neat or easy or linear. I used to refer to my classroom as controlled chaos. <laughs> and it's, a, it's even more challenging right now to control the, the natural and beautiful chaos of learning. But rather than fearing this time of uncertainty that comes with shifting our instruction online, seize the opportunity to really be vulnerable with your students. If you're struggling to master Zoom or apply Flipgrid or try some new uh, method of learning in this online world that we're in now, ask your students. Ask them to help you learn. Have them lead a session using a new application. And if you're really up for a challenge, invite all of your students to bring to the table an application or a website or something that they think could really enhance your online learning together. Then use those strategies and be sure to give and share credit with your students for that co-designing of, of, of learning that's occurring. Also remember that the computer doesn't have to be the only vehicle for learning. Encourage your students to get creative and build a Rube Goldberg machine out of random items from around the house. Download an, an exercise app and use it. That would be the key. <laughs> um, or listen to a podcast. The opportunities are endless of different ways that we can tap into resources that are available to keep our students engaged in their learning. Number five. Become a Yoda. Yep, that's right, become a Yoda. In a live setting, teachers can reteach, they can redirect, they can reevaluate a lesson based on student reactions, right? Um, we're no longer in a live setting. We're, we're talking to a little green dot, we're hoping people are engaged, um, but we really don't know what's going on, however Yoda would. Online platforms are inherently, inherently more challenging for teachers to gauge immediate in visual feedback. Like you can't see a kid yawning um, or checking their cell phone or easily know if that student's looking intentionally at the screen or engaged in lesson or actually playing a video game. It's not like you're in front of a classroom and I see three kids on their heads on the desk. Uh, uh, That's a good cue for me. I'm not so engaging. I can't see that anymore. Um, I can't see it if we're not doing live webinars. And I know some are doing live webinars, but it's usually a combination. Um, so to be that Yoda, to, to see, to see differently, um, to envision things out there, we're going to have to channel that inner Yoda and see what students are doing at a whole new level. Yoda had these two sayings, which I absolutely love. Uh, one is do or do not. There is no try. Think of that. Do or do not. There is no try. This quote simply a lesson in commitment and the power in giving something are all, not just giving it a try. This online platform that we're all dealing with now, it's not about trying our best. No, it's about giving our all. Yeah, we need to try our best, but we have to give our all. The second quote that I love from him, which I can relate to the most actually in these times, is that we must unlearn what you have learned. You must unlearn what you have learned. We're creatures of habit. We tend to love our routines and our go-to methods, but sometimes we have to shake it up the process and even unlearn our process to succeed. Webinars is not my go-to. Uh, as a matter of fact, it scares the heck out of me. Um, I had to unlearn the whole notion of, oh, I have to be in front of people. Oh, I have to have this relationship with them. Oh, not giving people hugs is actually a traumatic thing for me at the moment. Um, I have to unlearn these things. And as Yoda would say, we must unlearn what we have learned in order to succeed in this new environment we're in. So be that Yoda. Number six. That was so wise, Dr. Russ. I feel like uh, you're kind of being a Yoda today. Yeah, well, I, I, I feel as old as Yoda, and I too have gray hairs coming out of my ears. So. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Keep it real. Um, while we dream of students that just, you know, bounce out of bed in the morning, ready to jump on their computer for a day of online learning, we are not delusional. Uh, I have three teenagers in my house right now, and I can tell you that they would much rather be binge watching anything on Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, or the most shocking thing to me, re -watch, watching reruns of sporting events. 
Um, so we're not delusional. We know that online learning isn't the first thing kids are excited about doing right now. We need to find ways to be able to connect to the things that they are interested in and the things that they're watching and consuming on TV and social media and connect that to learning. Uh, so for example, encourage students to write a character profile on someone from one of their favorite shows or compare and contrast different movies that they've been watching or even explore a documentary. Um, as the Tiger King has recently proven, documentaries can be quite interesting. And then have conversations with your students around how that applies to things that they're learning. Um, what does the Tiger King have to teach us about the pull of social media and about animal activist organizations and um, and all sorts of other stuff. The key is to find ways to connect to things that they're interested in and things that they're learning, both in your conversations with them and, uh, and in their learning. Encourage them to make healthy choices and show that you have interest in things that they are interested in as well. Keep it real. So Lisa, the <laughs> of all the examples in the world, I wrote down, you use Tiger King. And to quote yep. you, all sorts of that other stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that shows you how we've degraded right now. So now we're quoting <laughs> Uh The other thing which I want to thank you for is when I think my life is going to the poop here and I'm worried about work and this, that, and the other thing, and finances, I always remind myself I could be you and have three people <laughs> in the house. So that's, my guess is half the audience out there is now feeling better about themselves too. Uh, <laughs> Uh, number, oh, this is pretty apropos. Number seven, it's okay to smile. Um, hold on, God. Sorry. Oh, oh. Okay, so <laughs> I'm now red and now I have a stomach ache. If you weren't sure this was live, it really is now because for the first time in my entire life, I've just hung up on my mother. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I don't even know where I am right now. Um, all right, so. Sorry, mom. And now the entire world knows I just hung up on my mother who I love dearly. Okay, so it's okay to smile and right now be depressed. Um, the bottom line is we can't make light of our current situation with COVID-19. However, that doesn't mean we can't smile, we can't laugh or find some joy in these challenging times. I had to go to the doctor the other day, not about COVID-19, but because I broke my foot, sadly. Um, and going in there, it was like I was visiting a morgue. Like you had to wait in the car, not that that's what you do in the morgue, but I'd wait in the car, they come out, they take your temperature, let you in one at a time. And so that, I get all that, I go in there and people like, it was like death. So I just smiled at the nurse and I just said, I know I can't do this, but I'm giving you a virtual hug just because I think you need one. She just started crying. <laughs> not, not the response I wanted, but it showed me that the people just had so much of this kept up inside that it's okay, it's okay to smile. And I know it's not okay to hug, but it's okay to give virtual ones. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, the bottom line is it showed me more than ever the importance of, of being human, showing people we love and we care about them. That's okay to smile. And yeah, these are sad times, but, but we can rise above them um, and still share a smile because there's lots of people that means the world too. Bottom line, where I get emotional, Many of our students are experiencing mental and physical health challenges, economic hardships, and like this overwhelming sense of uncertainty. Not just them, but us as well. We need to create opportunities to smile and laugh without feeling guilty. Life and learning needs to remain joyful. It, maybe now more than ever. Don't be afraid to share a silly moment or a little bit of humor with your students. Consider having students create memes related to the current events. I've seen so many of them. Some are incredibly disturbing. Other ones make me laugh out loud. Share a joke of the day. Hold a virtual spirit week. What you teach is out there that hate spirit week, there's no time like the present to have one. Have them wear their pajamas during pajama day. Dress like a hero. Have a crazy hair drape. The, the thing is, it's safe. Do it all online. One of my favorite stories that I've heard over the past few days is when teachers are doing stuff online, they're challenging the kids to share pictures of their favorite thing to eat while they're learning online. And I took that as an opportunity because the second this is done, I am eating my pancakes. <laughs> oh my word. These aren't fake pancakes. These are real pancakes that I made just to show you this is an <laughs> idea that you can put into practice right now. Damn, this smells good. And just for those health conscious people, this is turkey bacon. Just want you to know I'm not a complete fat so. All right, number eight. <laughs> oh, dear. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. I, I just, I don't even know where to go from there. I mean, first of all, I've got to say, I just have to tell everybody, there is no one who is more anti-cell phone during meetings and presentations than Dr. Russ. He has such strict rules um, with us that I am for certain going to be uh, emailing the rest of the team as soon as this is over and letting them know you got a call during our webinar. <laughs> From my mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Big fan of Mr. Rogers and my very favorite quote of his, uh, he once said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And I've just been incredibly um, moved, uh, incredibly grateful and incredibly inspired. Uh, seeing all the news footage of those people who are on the front lines as healthcare workers and and first responders and janitors cleaning schools and and people volunteering their time to give away meals to those who need them. And there's a lot of good to find right now. Yes, the world is a somewhat scary place right now and there are huge challenges that we're that we're facing and we we as Dr. Russ said, never want to take that lightly. But we also find that there are an, there's an incredible amount of generosity and goodness in the human spirit to be observed right now in how people are responding. So teach your students to recognize that, to look for it, to recognize the kindness and generosity of others in a time when it can be tempting to hoard supplies and be tunnel visioned on our own individual well-being. And challenge your students to also be helpers during this time. Online learning provides a ready-made platform for students to collaborate and help one another in their learning. Last night, my daughter was on with four of her friends on a, a Zoom call and they were all together helping each other through a really challenging assignment that they were struggling to, um, to tackle without the typical teacher support that they have. Uh, give students those opportunities to really work and collaborate with one another and also encourage them to be helpers in their own home. Uh, play with the younger sibling, help make dinner and clean up, write notes of thanks to healthcare workers and first responders. But more, most importantly, ask students what their ideas will be. I have no doubt that they will, they will surprise and impress you with their ideas of how they can be helpers during this time. Thanks, Lisa. Um, just for, for an update, I want you to know I was listening to what you had to say, but I've also had three texts from my mother. Um, and I want to read this to people right now because it's just it's the reality of, of life at the moment. Um, I have two parents both in their mid-80s. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but a quick question regarding a potential raccoon in my chimney. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> this is no joke. I, uh, so now I guess I wish I had three teenagers in my house instead of a raccoon <laughs> in my mouth. Okay, number nine. We're on the home stretch today, gang. Number nine, unmask the hidden heroes. There's lots of heroes out there. Medical professionals, grocery, co grocery clerks, cooks, uh, course educators, um, people driving buses, um, people that are opening up and, and providing food for people. I mean, there's, there's tons of heroes out there, but there's also another group of heroes at our disposal, and that's called the parents. Yeah, parents. Whether they're ready for it or not, they are now intimately involved in the teaching process. And for that matter, whether we're ready for it not or not, they're intimately involved in the teaching process. Just think of it. Parents are now classroom managers, uh, tutors, cafeteria workers, nurses, and counselors. Yep, all at the same time. They're doing it all. They're caring for the kids, they're feeding the kids, they're supporting their kids like never before. Now, Understand that not all parents are the same. Some actually arise into the occasion, some may not. Even as career educators, our learning curve is incredibly steep as we sit at the kitchen table with our own kids, uh, attempting to keep up with our own jobs and support the online learning activities of having multiple kids in different grade levels. Um, I, I know parents that have got kids in, in, in preschool and some in high school. Uh, we're hearing countless stories of parents coming to a new appreciation for teachers and what it takes to support the learning of their students. I hear a lot from teachers that we work with in the field, like Whoa, from parents, uh, friends that I say, wow, I can't believe how this kid acts at home. I'm like, oh, you could have just talked to the teacher. I'm pretty sure they could have told you. The bottom line is most parents are not able to dedicate full-time attention to this now homeschooling of their children. And we can't forget that many unknown variables exist in every home situation. 
saying that though, we can and, and we should and we must quite frankly utilize parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, um, provide easy lessons for them to support their kid. Let's not overburden them, they're ready to pop to begin with, but we can provide some easy things. Have your child, going back to student voice, have your child use their voice and share what they're doing with parents as part of an assignment. So it's not like saying parents, oh, make sure you ask your kids what they learned online. No, the assignment to the student is, one of your assignments, share with your parents, your aunt, your uncle, your grandparents, anybody like it would do my heart good if my kids did it with my parents um what did you learn today as part of their assignment from measuring ingredients when you're making pancakes to making lists asking questions that we're uncertain about we need as parents to to create learning opportunities but our job as teachers and students is to allow that to happen so have your kids work with parents have your students um work with with their parents about Let's just explore some questions we don't know. Last night, perfect example. I went to the fridge because I wanted a cold drink. We're out of ice cubes. Me in my sensitive way, I'm like, why are we always out of ice cubes? Like I was not happy. Well, and, and, and obviously it was a rhetorical question because we're always seemingly out of ice cubes, but it was bothering me for some odd reason. My daughter pipes up and says, oh dad, it's a matter of supply and demand. I'm like, what? Like just that way. And realizing that my daughter is a freshman in college who's now doing her last semester at home in studying economics. So she tells me it's a supply and demand. I was so impressed with my daughter at that moment, like genuinely impressed, like, wow, there was an incredible learning opportunity. Now, I wanna to be totally honest, that's not where my brain went because I told her it had nothing to do with supply and demand. It was all about greed. Stop being so damn greedy. Now, clearly that was a wrong and misused opportunity for learning. I guess my challenge to the, to the teachers is to unmask that hidden hero, the parents, and work with parents. Give them some cues about how to take the simplest, simplest question that we may ask in our own house and turn it into some kind of learning opportunity that the kids can then report back to their classrooms. Last but not least, Lisa, take it home. Don't forget about you. Um... We feel so strongly that during this time, it's not only important that we work to establish support for our students, but that we also consider the needs of adults in, in our schools. Um, reach out to your colleagues, continue to create opportunities to collaborate. Make sure you let them know that you care about their safety and health and well being. And I would encourage you in this time where it's, it's so much easier to send a quick text or an email to also now and again, just pick up the phone. There's something about hearing a person's voice and having, having that conversation where you can really hear one another and convey uh, how much we care about each other during this time. The more healthy you are, the more you'll be able to support your students. Get out and take some, some opportunities to get some fresh air um, and, and just reach out, stay well connected with those that you love, both on a personal level and also within your school community. Dr. Russ, are you ready to wrap us up? Oh, I'm ready. Now I'm squinting because I got to read this on my screen. You can do it. Uh, I can do it. Thank you, Dr. Landy, so much. You're, you're awesome. Awesome, awesome. So let me recap. One, be creative in the box. Yep, we're in a box. Let's make it pretty, let's make it attractive, let's be super creative. If you need to think outside it, think outside it. Just remember we need to be creative in the box we're in. Don't hide. The kids need personal connectedness. Even if it's via online, they wanna see the real you. Not a phony you, don't hide, just be out front. Grow bigger ears, feedback, feedback, feedback more important now than ever before. This whole grow bigger ears is about student voice being loud and clear. We need to listen, we need to learn, we need to lead from those voices. Embrace the unknown. It is easy, super easy to go into a hole and say, ah, oh, I don't wanna do this, I don't know how to do this, I'm sick of doing this. Nope, nope, you gotta, you gotta go after it. And I don't mean go after it like accept it. No, I'm talking about embracing it. Get excited about it. Become a Yoda, be prolific. Think before things are happening. Realize what the future could hold or potentially does hold as you're teaching. Keep it real. The bottom line is let's not live in a bubble here. A lot of stuff going on at the same time. 
particularly when it comes to covering content, getting parents involved and our expectations of kids. That's not about lowering our expectations, but it's keeping them real because it's more. It's more now than just academic growth. It's personal and social. It's okay to smile. Yeah, incredibly sad times, um, just stifling at times. It, it's, it, it's debilitating at, at times, but it's okay to smile, to share that smile. Let someone else smile. You want a challenge to take away from this? Make one kid or person smile um, today. Won't you be my neighbor? Take Mr. Rogers. Looking for the helpers out there. The bottom line is we are the helpers out there, but challenge the students to look for other helpers. How can they become helpers? It's taking that student voice and turn it into a leadership role of action about thinking beyond oneself. Think beyond oneself. Unmask the hidden heroes. Probably the greatest challenge of all is how do we get parents involved that it's meaningful and productive and not overwhelming for the parents. They're there. We need to be creative of how we're using them. And last but not least, the Lisa's point, don't forget about you. More than ever, more than ever, we need to be creative, we need to be more engaging, and we need to be cognizant of the social and personal well-being of our students. We commend, absolutely commend our colleagues around the world for not giving up, but getting stronger but not being driven by fear, but by purpose. We really hope the last 30 minutes were useful because you know what? We are absolutely under 30 minutes. Um, if you take just one idea, we're gonna feel successful about this. If we can do anything at the Institute, you have the website information up there, please feel free to reach out. We're all in this together. You're making a difference. Stay proud, stay strong. Thanks. You gonna share your pancakes now? Those look pretty delicious. Yeah, once I figure out how to stop this damn screen and deal with my mother's raccoon. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs>